So I'm going to ask you to speculate a little bit. So what do you think is causing this positive benefit? So like, what, what do you think like deep down are like the fundamental mechanisms or if, it, if not at a kind of a biological uh, neurological level instead at like a social or personal or maybe interpersonal level, um, what's going on that, that's making this effective? You know, we can't say for sure. Um, there's been lots of uh, proposed mechanisms and we're studying and learning more day, you know, day by day. Like I said, I was literally just reading a new paper that you know, came out this morning um, before we got on today. Um, so it's, it's exciting because we're still learning so much um, now. Um, but there's a few things that we've found on the biological side of the fence that uh, seem to be very good, uh, you know, Kind of candidates for some of the mechanisms that we're seeing. Um, those include changes in brain uh, connectivity and functional connectivity, pretty much the way that the different brain areas are um, synchronizing with one another and communicating. Um, so that's one thing that uh, is kind of looking at kind of the bigger picture. So this whole organ up here. Um, and when you zoom in uh, more on the um, smaller kind of cellular and molecular uh, scale in the brain and the neurons, um, you're seeing potential for neurogenesis, so the, you know, birth of new neurons in the brain, um, and, uh, you, you know, that's from animal models, not human models, but still, you know, if you see that type of uh, thing going on in mice, it does make you wonder what's happening in humans. Um, and also, uh, well, neuroplasticity uh, in uh, administration of these drugs, particularly in forming new uh, synapses or connections uh, and branching projections like dendrites and axons. I'm sorry, dendrites uh, and, and synapses between the neurons. And so that's the type of thing that can atrophy when there's certain types of mental health conditions like depression or, um, or can become, uh, you know, those connections can kind of become fewer and farther between. Um, and if you can strengthen or grow or build more of those connections, I um, mean, that's what you see in the typical kind of uh, curve of learning, for instance, uh, somebody who's learning a new skill or something, they'll, um, they'll kind of, um, wire together their neurons in a way. Um, and when you get uh, successful antidepressant treatments, you also see more of these um, connections being formed in certain key regions like the prefrontal cortex, for instance. Um, so those are some of the biological mechanisms that are of interest. And there's you know, been more interest in that neuroplasticity inducing effect recently, and we're learning more about that. Um, great study also from, the group, uh, from a group who's working in Denmark right now um, looking at uh, serotonin to a receptor density and binding and how that influences psychedelic effects and lasting effects and how that works studying not just humans and using positron emission tomography but also studying animals um, really cool study that um, they just published with pigs um, where they can see pretty much um, that a day and seven days after these pigs got administered psilocybin um, they're seeing these proteins um, in the brain areas that um, would suggest they're growing these new connections. And, and so when you see that there and you see that at the cellular level as well, um, you know, that, that really speaks to uh, exciting uh, possibility that this could create focused connections in the areas we want to, and that might be leading to the benefits we're seeing and also to some of the, what, you know, people might call behavioral plasticity or changes in behaviors like quitting smoking or something like that. Um, Chuck Nichols is at Louisiana State University has done some really neat work as well looking at uh, anti-inflammatory properties of psychedelics and this is another potential biological mechanism that could factor into some of the mental health benefits. Inflammation is known to be related to all sorts of different uh, pathologies including mental health uh, problems uh, like depression. And so if you can reduce some of that inflammation and uh, some of those uh, cytokines, and that could also biologically lead to some of these uh, positive effects, or at least go along with some of these positive effects. Um, and, you know, I'm not a brain scientist, but um, as I mentioned before, you know, my interest has been really psychologically the mechanisms that lead people to change um, how they live their lives, how they behave, their attitudes, uh, and those types of peak or transcendent or what we also sometimes call mystical experiences seem to be real big existential experiences for people that 
can kind of help them change their narrative around their self identity. Who am I? What am I? You know, what is my place in the world? Um, and so I think that's been a big one that, um, you know, our group at Hopkins has been focusing on. And, um, you know, me personally, I've been looking at because uh, when people have these kind of big earth shaking experiences, which they can sometimes have with psychedelics, sometimes with other, you know, means they can also be induced. Um, and, you know, that can have these kind of persisting ramifications for, you know, how they see things, how they see themselves, how they see the world, and um, how they then kind of go on and to engage with the world. 